Thank you for joining today's training. The recording will now begin. Thank you and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Lee Berman. I'm the Senior Partnership Specialist out of the great state of Nevada. It's great to be with you this afternoon. I'd first just like to thank all those um, viewing this training. Um, I know things are a little tough these days. I appreciate you taking uh, 90 minutes to a couple hours to spend with us to learn a little bit more about Rome and the rapid response maps. I'm going to quickly uh, tell us what, what's our goal for today, right? What are we going to try to do in this session? I have two goals, right? Number one, learn how to use Rome, which is the application you see in front of you right now, very exciting, to make us even better at our jobs than we are right now. And then number two, how to use the response map, which I'll preview. Wait one second. Here, as you can see here, oops, one moment. And how we're going to learn, we're going to learn how to use the rapid response map um, to hold ourselves accountable to track our progress over the coming months. Um, I want to first, though, tell us the format of today's session. So the plan is, is that we are going to, or I will speak about Rome for about 20 to 30 minutes, and then our facilitator, our question facilitator, Ms. Veronica Meter. Veronica, will you say hello, please? Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, Veronica. Thank you for being with us. Um, Veronica has been kind enough to join us to facilitate the session. Um, folks have questions, and as we go, you can put them into the chat bar on the WebEx. And then we've also prepared a few frequently, frequently asked questions that folks have about both Rome and the rapid response map. So we'll try to address those as well um, in the hopes to try to anticipate some of the concerns you may have after watching this program. So just to go over the format one more time, 20 to 30 minutes, we'll talk about Rome. Please put your questions into the chat box, and then we'll take about 15 minutes to address the questions, and then we'll talk 20 to 30 minutes about the rapid response rate and then address those questions, all right? It's going to be a lot of fun, I promise. All right, let's start at the beginning. Why Rome? What is Rome and why do we need it? Right? We have a lot of people to count, right? More than 300 million people that we – presume live in the country, but we don't know until we count them every 10 years. And unfortunately, for us at the Census Bureau, we just don't have the personnel or the resources to reach every single person in the country to let them know why the census is so important and why we should take, you know, 10 minutes to self-respond and how easy it is, right? But if we had those resources, we wouldn't need an application like this. We would just reach out to every, every, every resident in the country and say, hey, do the census. It's super fun and important. Right, we'd fill it out. But unfortunately, right, we're on a time limit. We're, we're on, we, have re, we have time limit. We have resource limit. Right? We need to get these results to the president by the 31st of December. Okay? So the Census Bureau, and this is amazing. This is an, and this is an amazing feat. In the hopes of helping us um, allocate our time and efforts to the, the best of our abilities to try to get the most amount of people to respond, have developed, this application that you see in front of you, the Response Outreach Area Mapper, Rome. Okay, the goal of Rome is essentially because we have these limited resources to, to tell us where we need to focus most of our time and how we can get the most out of our time over the coming months to get the most responses to the census. Right? You know, as I'm sure it's fairly intuitive, that not every person has the same risk assessment in terms of responding to the census. And what does that mean? That means that we, um, that not every, some people are more likely to respond to the census than other people, right? Um, our goal is to spend our time and our efforts focusing on the areas um, and, and talking to people that are at risk of not participating on the census, right? If we take all of our time and our resources and we put them into communities that are already going to respond to the census, that's not the best use of our federal government time and money, right? So that's why we've developed this amazing application. So just a quick history about what this is. Okay, um, after the 2010 census, you know, the Bureau had a competition. It, it, or, um, all sorts of developers and engineers sent in algorithms, or just essentially fancy equations, on how you could predict whether someone was going to respond to the census. The Bureau took the best version of that, which had 
more than 700 different variables and was able to replicate the same um, responses with just 25 variables. And that's, what Rome, and that's what Rome is, and that's what the low response score is here. Okay, so Rome, in, in this map that we see here, I'm gonna not play with my finger, but with the mouse, so you might be able to follow better. Um, Rome shows us on a map where, where we need to focus our time. And they made it really, really simple. If you have it super simple for us, they created a metric, and it's called the low response score. And this is a simple metric to help us predict if someone is going to respond to the census. And luckily for us, right on the Rome application, they tell us about the low response score. So I think it's best if we just read this together, as I cannot put it any better than this. Let's start right here. The results of the 2020 census can help shape the future of your community. And there are many ways for individuals, businesses, community organizations, and others to play a part. Okay? So it tells you this is the site here where you can learn more about Rome. I'll show you that here in a second. So let's learn about low response score, LRS. You are looking at a national map of census tracts shaded by predicted male non-response rate, otherwise known as a low response score. You should interpret the low response score as the percentage of households predicted to not self-respond to the decennial census. The higher the LRS is in a census tract, the harder that area may be to survey. Okay, and then it gives you basic information um, specific about that you can learn more about the low response score here. So let's, let's just do a basic example, right? If I have a community, a tract, right? A tract is just the, the fancy word that the Bureau uses for a community, right? A tract can have between 2,500 people to 8,000 people. They okay? usually average around 4,000 people. So let's say you have a tract with a LRS score of 25. What does that mean? That means that 25% of the households, households in that tract are predicted to not respond to the census. And the converse is also true, right? That means 75% of the households in that tract are predicted to respond to the census. Okay, just so you have a frame of reference here, we are very concerned with tracks that have an LRS score um, of about 25 and above, right? We really, on the partnership side, we're really focused in on those tracks with those on 25 and above in the hopes that, again, in spending and getting the most out of our time and our efforts. All right, now that we know what Rome is and we know what a low response score is, I'm gonna to begin to show you the application, okay? First, how did I get here? Well, this is the census Rome page. This is census.gov slash Rome. If you're unsure how to find this, you could just type census space R-O-A-M into the Google and this page will come up. Okay. And we'll let's scroll down here quickly. There are super fun things to help you. Because unfortunately, I'm not going to be here to answer your questions, but the questions are already answered. The user guide is very helpful. The frequently asked questions are very helpful. The quick tips guide is very helpful. There's a recorded webinar by a brilliant woman named Suzanne McArdle, which I highly recommend. She's 10 times better at this than I am. If you have questions and this wasn't sufficient, please watch that. That will make up for any shortcomings I have. I'm gonna go over here now and show you the roadmap. All right, we're gonna go from right to left. So we saw before, right? This is the about icon. This is where if you have a question, uh, what is a low response score, right? Again, if it's 30, that means 30% 30 of the households are not expected to respond to the census. Move over here. This is the layer list. I hope everyone can see this. This is the way you're able to, uh, I guess it's the different layers that go on the map here. Um, I'm gonna show you this as we look up different um, addresses as we come along here in a moment. Okay. Making sure everyone can follow along. Okay. Here's the legend, and this is where the color coding comes in. So we talked about how we really wanna focus our efforts on you know, LRS tracks that are 25 and above. 
okay, you can see that Rome really helps you. And it helps, it gives you a visual view of how you can see uh, the different tracks. Okay, so the darker the blue, the more work we need to do in the neighborhood. Okay, that, that's really how it works. Right? So we want to focus the darker the shades of blue, that's where we need to focus our time. All right, so that, that's the left part. Let's move over here. Let's learn how to zoom. Everyone's favorite part. So let's say I want to learn more about beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Of course you do. Well, how can I zoom? There are two ways I could get to Vegas, right? It's somewhere around here. Right? I have traditional zoom. I'm going to close this legend. Let's, let's not forget dark blue means more work. So I can zoom like this. Right? Give it a second. I'm going to have to beg your indulgence. We're doing a, a WebEx across many states right now. We're just going to have to go slow and let uh, all the information download. All right, so that's the traditional zoom like that. The other neat zoom I can, I can teach you, it's worth getting into the webinar just for this. If you use the shift key, and I put the shift key down and I click like this, see the unneeded there? I can make a little territory like this. And then, aha. Wait, give it a second. And it renders like that. Okay. So I can shift like this. Pushing the plus key. I'll give it a second. Or I can shift you the Put the shift key down, make a little X. Uh-huh. Beautiful Las Vegas Nevada. All right. So as we saw here on the legend, that these dark areas mean to be hardest to count tracks in the Las Vegas Valley. Right? And then as it as the shades are even some different. Yeah, right? So that's how we do shift. Okay, let's say I want to go back to where I was. That's what the home button comes in. Ha. Ah. Right, and I'm back to my national map. I right, will give it a second to make sure everything catches up. Okay, I want to show you these buttons over here. Eighth map is the most important. Okay, because as we saw before, right, we're looking at Las Vegas. Yeah. Once more, sorry to have zoomed out. So I'm looking at the Las Vegas Valley here. Um, it's hard to tell exactly where I am, right? I mean, you would have to be very, very, very familiar with the geography of the Las Vegas Valley or your locality to be able to tell where these blue tracks are. That's where this helps. This is the base map gallery. Okay. Have a few fun options on here to try imagery with labels. That's a fun one. Ooh. You can see some of our small localities. Um, the one I'm going to recommend that you use is Street. You likely are going to want to know what street your track is on. Right? Because the goal of today's session is how can I use Rome to make me better at my job? And the first way, as you can see, is it's going to help you identify the areas of your locality, your neighborhood, sorry, um, that need the most work. Right? So the places in blue are the areas that the uh, Nevada team, the Clark County team, has been working on for really hard the last six months when they come with them. Um, I want to show you this also. So we saw layers, right? I still can't really see the streets, though, right? That's where we have to use transparency. I want to show you how I got to that again. I click on this box here. Oops. Here are some. Click on this box here. Okay. Play on the three dots over here. Transparency. Ooh. Okay. Right? Opaque means all, all the way filled in, right? So I go like, I make it super opaque. Now I can't see anything, right? If I make it super transparent, I can see all the street maps, but what happened to my tracks, right? So my recommendation, you may want to write this down, 50% is the sweet spot. 
right? Or maybe even a little bit more. Right? Right? So this way, I can both, and you can see this now, right? I can both see um, where my add new tracks are, and I can um, see where they're located, right? Like this is North Lamb, for example. So to review that quickly, the first thing we did, we went, I clicked on the, the four boxes on the left. I'm pointing with my finger. That's not helping you. You click on the four boxes on the left. You click on streets. Okay, like that. Then we click on the layers. On the dots. And some call them ellipses. And then take this, it's usually over here. And you make it a 50% transparent. And now you have a very useful roadmap so you can see things. All right. oh, we're, oh, we're having way too much fun. Um, the point I want to make now, because this is going to happen here, is we're about to play with the data. And once we start opening the data table, sometimes we will run into a mistake or an error. Um, your friend is F5. If you're doing something and you're not getting a result, push F5, and it will just refresh the page. All right, I also want to help. F5, it's very helpful. You're going to see me do it here as we begin to do our searches. Okay, so I want to show you the different types of searches. Oh, we'll do F5 right now. Why not? Let's see what happens. Um, let's learn how to use the search bar. Now, Rome can do a whole bunch of super fun searches. All right, so I'm just going to show you how to do a few, okay? Um, let's take a look over here. As you can see, look at all these neat different types of searches we can do. Um, search by address, that'll be relevant to your life. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a few of these. Let's first try a search by county. We were just looking at the Las Vegas Valley, home of beautiful Clark County, Nevada. See what comes up. So, so my advice is to type slowly into the search box, allow the results to populate, and then click on the populated results. So from here, I would like to go to Clark County, Nevada. Boom, right there annoying. And then we want to use our zoom tool. I'll try not to point with my finger again. So that you can see here in orange, that's all of Clark County, Nevada. Boom. Okay. Let's say I want to search a track, for example, like um, one of Clark County, Nevada's best tracks. So let's say um, there's a great track in North Las Vegas. And I'll look it up now. Okay. So what to do, how to search by track. So what the first thing I did, all right, going too fast. Search by census tract. Census tract. And then you see how um, the, uh, the formatting of the way it's typed in here? Like, you have to copy it exactly, okay? So census, space, tract, space. And then we're going to look up 36.21 of Clark County, Nevada. Ah, see how populated? And it really likes it if it allows to populate on it. All you have to do is click. All right. And then I can see this track is 36.21. Again, though, I just have colors, right? This is confusing. How can I change that again? What do we do? We go to the base map. We click on streets. We go to our layers list. All right. We click on the dots. Transparency. And get the capacity over here. All right. So you can see here, I'm going to preview the way that we can use, um, we can learn certain information, right? So I click on the track, give it a second, okay? This is 36.21. On this, by the way, track 36.21 is the highest responding track in all of Nevada right now. That's as of um, whatever today is in April. Um, and you can see that the low response score for this track is 5.3. So it's expected, as we've learned about low response score, right? Okay, low response score. So our low response score, that means that 94.7% of the households in this track, 36.21 of Clark County, Nevada, are expected to respond to the census. So it's not shocking that this is the highest responding track in the entire state of Nevada. Okay? Pretty easy how to search a track. 
I'll do one more track for you. Let's look at another perfect track this is out here in Nevada. So again, how to do it, senses, space, track. And again, if you can't remember, just follow the prompts down here. Just follow the exact same formatting. We're going to look at 57.14, Clark County, Nevada. Boom. All right. It pulls it up. And then to learn more information about the track, I just click on it. This is the second highest uh, responding track in the state right now in Nevada. It is in the lowest stock score, 4.6%. Kind of neat, right? But it's fun how all this stuff works together. Okay, let me show you a couple of other searches, and I'm going to show you some data. But we got some fun ahead, and then I'll get to questions. I promise, I promise. Okay, another search we can do. Okay, by ACO. Okay, so in the Los Angeles region, we're divided into 43 ACOs. So let's see how we can, you can see the territory of each L ACO from Rome. So how do we see, so it's by city. So um, Nevada is divided into two, so it's a good example. So Las Vegas Area Census Office and a North Las Vegas State. Let's take a look at it here. So as you can see, this territory, I'm gonna zoom out, zoom out. I'm gonna zoom out. I'm going to zoom out, okay? This, what you see there, that, Nevada has two offices, okay? That's the territory for one of them, okay? Everything else up here is 3258. All right, so you can use Rome to see a search like that. You see, because a lot of the data, is, uh, a lot of our uh, results are evaluated by ACL office, so this is useful too. And lastly, I can show you is the search by place. So we're going to check in if we have time, a little bit later over in Portland, Oregon. But her place is that um, there are some cities are, that don't nest comfortably in a county, right? Because you can see here, you don't really have a way to search by city, right? State, county, or what about, you know, Portland, which is across uh, Portland Metro, uh, what, seven counties across two states, you know. You can type it right here, Portland. Oh, it doesn't even populate. That was insulting. Oh, wow. Wow, that's tough. Okay. Is it now? Now you can see the jurisdiction for Portland, Oregon. Cool, right? So those are all the different ways, that, uh, all the different types of searches that you can do. Now I want to show you some of the data, uh, how to use the data that's in Rome. I'm going to show you how to use the data that's in Rome. Um, to show us how to prioritize some tracks relative to other tracks. And then I'm going to show you how to use Rome to help you as a CRR in the field. And then I promise I will talk to you. Okay, so let's go visit beautiful Clark County, Nevada again. All right. Let's say I want to learn information about Clark County, right? And you can see on the flu, I'm going to take off this for a second. I'll just like I'll shift quick. So you can see that the, the relative differences in blues, right? But I can't really tell which of these blue areas should be prioritized over other blue areas, right? They're all just kind of relative different colors of blue. I can, however, if I know the low response scores. But you might be wondering, how am I going to find that out? It's embedded in the application itself. This is so cool. Watch this. See this down here? The table here? Open that's your table. Watch what I'm gonna do. The data is embedded in the browser. Come on. Nice hold your plot. I mean, come on, how cool is that? How cool is that? Okay, we are able to essentially see all the relative difference between these tracks based on this table. How fun is that? Now let me show you how to use this table. First thing, um, how to sort. Okay, so you see this here, low response score. Right, you know, all these different names, right? This, here's the census track name, right? If you want to search by census track, this is what you would put into the search box up here, right? How to sort this table, okay? Sort, click on, again, click on low response score, sort descending. Ooh, ooh, fun, okay? Now it is showing you the tracks based, listed by low response score, or as you consider this by priority, right? 
So I see 39.9. This means that 39.9% of the households in Census Tract 22.07 in Clark County are predicted to not respond to the census. All right, that's what that means. How, how cool is that? Okay, so you might have saw, I'm going to show you how to quickly do a filter, okay? And when you saw this initially, you saw there were some Arizona mixed in, because essentially this table here shows you whatever's on this screen here. So I'm not going to move it around because we're on WebEx across multiple states and uh, we've had enough rendering issues for one day. But if I drag this screen around, this table will move. Okay? So this table right now only shows you what's on the screen. So I am not interested in Arizona. Arizona is not even in the L.A. region. I mean, we are so far beyond not interested in what's going on in Arizona. We like them very much. Um, but to take out the Arizona data, we're going to go to Options. We're going to go to Filter. Okay, add expression filter. I felt expression, excuse me. Okay, we're going to go on here, count, count name, okay? C-O-U-N-A-M-E is the county I'm interested in, Clark County. Okay. Okay. okay, now notice this over here, it's 497. Let's see what happens. Let's get lucky. No whammies, no whammies, stop. Okay, so, so, the, so the seven tracks in Arizona have now been taken out of the set, okay? Awesome. Go back up here again, start to send. So now the only data on this table is from Clark County, okay? So let's say, though, I want to see where is this track. I have a couple of options. I could double-click on it, and it could take me right there, or, and this is way more fun, you can click on the side here. Do you see how see the mouse is on the left all the way to the side? Watch what happens if I click here. Ooh, you see that? Ooh, it's over there. Ooh. Ah. Ooh, right. Essentially, I can go through here and click and show folks the most important tracks that we need to focus on by priority by slowly clicking down this list. Like that. Very neat. So also, something else I can do. So let's say I want to show my partners um, or folks I'm working with which tracks have a no response score above 30. I can use the shift key and highlight multiple tracks like this. See? Multiple. So I could go down, shift, I'm pushing shift and clicking. And it will show, and essentially what I can do, let's just take a few up. I'm a little too excited there. You've got to be gentle. I'll just do these for now. So I've got the 35 selected. These are the 35 most important tracks. So if I want to learn more about where these are and uh, where these are located, things like that, I can close this data table like this. And now I can use my, again, more shift key, right? So click the shift key. Going to make the, uh, the plus sign. Make my box like this. Give it a second. Let go. Oh, uh -huh. right. How fun is that? So the program will show you that. So it will keep your highlight on your table, no matter how much you zoom in and out. So you can get a bit of a feel for. Uh, where we are in terms of the feel of where your tracks are distributed across your county. Okay. I want to do an example. Um, I want to do this one more time with a different county. So this you can show, I just want to show you how to do this again so that you can do it on your own just to reinforce that. And then I'm going to show you um, some examples on how we can use Rome to help us at our job. Okay. So how did I pull up this county map? So let's do an entirely new county. So we're going to push F5. I'm just risky when we do that. We're just going to reload everything. And it came back. Nice. Okay. I want to learn, let's say I'm working out of beautiful Whatcom County, Washington, right? Home of Western Washington University. Okay. I, just, right, I went down to here. I went to county. Okay. I started typing in here. Whatcom County, Washington. Awesome. All right, to go more north than that. Okay. So let's say 
similar to what we were just doing in Clark. I want to know the most important tracks in Whatcom County that we need to be focusing on. All right, so we see some blue over here and some blue over here, but we're not sure. We don't know for sure, so let's take a look. We're going to open that data table. Remember what we did is we clicked on this little arrow. I'm going to go over to options, right? Filter. I guess, hold on one second. So you can see on this page here, we've got a lot of Washington. We've got some, oh, we've got some Idaho over there. Like we don't want, you know, Canada. Canada's not going to come up anyway. But you're going to want to run a filter, especially if you're near a border. Okay, right? you're going to go here. Uh, town name, right? Town name is Whatcom. County. No whammies. Ah, see? Oh, it's all when we walk them over here. Oh, okay, so then we'll sort. Descending. Now we know the most important sites. We can, oh, so the most important track is right there. And the next one. Is near it, and the next one. Oh, okay, so you can kind of see that there are three tracks in quickly shift over here. And down, it's essentially the most important tracks in Wapen County, right? We're in downtown Bellingham. I don't know how familiar you are with the surrender. That's the most important tracks. We're in downtown Bellingham. But then we also found out that by clicking down through the county, uh, tracked by LS, LSR score, we were able to see, well, let's give it a second, that this track over here was fourth or fifth in priority. That's pretty cool. So that's how you can prioritize your LRS track in a visual way to make it a lot easier. All right. So, Brian, if I look, let's get to it. How am I going to use this as a CRR to be even more awesome at my job? Okay. So let's use an example, right? Let's say, I'm going to just, it'd be easier to explain this through specific examples, right? Um, we're going to move, right, we're going back to Las, beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And let's say a terrific CRR was assigned to Clark High School at 42 91 Penwood Avenue. So how would I look that up? I could do it by address or I could do it by place. Let's try address, okay? 42 91. Penwood Avenue, okay. Always allow it to populate. It'll be nice to see you. Do you know that you are going to do an event at Clark High School? Well, you want to know um, what can Rome, how can Rome help me do this event? Like, what can Rome tell me about the, the neighborhood that includes Clark High School? Okay. So first, we have to remember we got to do the base map, right? Look how many boxes over here. We got to get some streets. Let's see where we are. Okay. So you know that Clark High School is located in this track here. That's where it's pointing. Okay. So what happens when I click on the track? Right, track 22.04. Okay. What do we learn? We learn 37%. This is a very high low response score, so we know that this is where we need to be. We learned about the median household, median household income, like 28, right? Median age is pretty low, right? We see children under 18 living in poverty, right? Over 50%. No high school graduation, we see that here. We see demographic information. Okay, these are important statistics you wanna see here in terms of preparing for your event, you'll want to see no one in household age 14 speaks English very well, 40.6%, okay? This is super important, right? If you're going to do an event and you're going into a neighborhood and you see something like that, we need language assistance, right? And you'll have to work with your, your partnership specialist to make sure that you have the, the, the right folks there who can answer census questions in the languages that we need. Okay? And you can learn, even though someone will go down here, you can learn you can learn more. You can learn. Households with broadband internet access, only 46%, right? So there are 25 variables that make that LSR score, that, uh, that, that 37.2. Um, 
but these are just some of the factors that go into it. So if you see something, for example, population with no computing device, right, we are going to need to make sure that we have, you know, um, iPad and things to have these, you know, to uh, help folks respond to the census. Other factors you want to look for. Renter and occupy housing, 86%. Okay? So there are a number of reasons why this community surrounding Clark High School is at risk of not responding to the census, but you can learn a lot about you know, the neighborhood you're going into. For example, married couple households with children under 18, right? Maybe in your conversations you need to make sure, um, hey, are we making sure that we're counting all the, all the children in the household, things like that. So you can learn a lot of different um, information about your tracks just based upon uh, clicking on these tracks and learning. Um, I wanted to, actually, I want to check in. Veronica, do you think it'd be best to pause now for questions? Absolutely. Anytime you're ready, Brian. Yeah, so um, uh, this, that's basically how to use the, uh, how to learn from Rome about the neighborhoods that you're going into. You'll say, also, I'm just going to show this one more time, and then we'll take questions. All right, you click on the track. And you can just scroll down and learn all this information. Um, I'm sorry, Veronica, I just want to do one more example. Let's say we wanted to go to Broad Acres Flea Market in uh, beautiful North Las Vegas, Nevada, by right? tens of thousands of people right, every week. And we are looking forward to visiting uh, Broad Acres as soon as we can. Right? So how, what can we learn about typing in the address, right? 2930, I believe it is Las Vegas Boulevard North. Right here. Okay. So when I click on the track and next to it, right, I see the low response score. We can scroll down. We can learn a bunch of it. We see that we have more than 40% of the folks living in this track are not born in the U.S. 20, right? We have a lot of Spanish speakers in this neighborhood, so this will be able to give us the tools to get the most out of these events that we possibly have and get broadband information down here. And so, so essentially you could do this as a CRR for any address that you have. You would just go up to here, the search bar, search by address, plug that address into here, and then click on, um, click on the track itself and learn about all the terrific ACS data, it's American Community Service data that's available. And I will now pause, and I am very pleased to take a few questions. Go ahead, Veronica. Thank you. Thanks for making this fun, Brian. I have to tell you, of all their census acronyms, Rome is fast becoming one of my favorites, I have to say. Um, okay, so let's go to a couple of questions we've been getting that are frequently asked from some of the ones that we need um, to do um, our jobs. Probably mo most frequently asked would be the number one, how would I pull up street map. Can you show us that, Brian? Sure, sure. All right, because essentially, I mean, that's a great place to start there, because you can't see the streets. What am I looking at, right? So, first the shift. If this, you just hold down that shift key, and make a little box like this. And then to get that, let me make a little, let me zoom one more time, so it's more useful. Okay, so to get the street map, we're going to go right over here to the face map gallery, and I recommend using streets, just like that. And then to uh, – that's it. That's cool. All right. Thank you. Those are pretty colors. I love – they're very soothing. Um, okay. The other question we get quite a bit, Brian, is how do I change the shading so I can see the streets? All right. No. The obvious follow-up question, right? So you, you only kind of see these, right? Is that Craig? I think so. So to see that for sure, we go to where the layers list up here. We go down to the dots, the ellipses. Look at the transparency, right? Opaque means all the way, all the way dark. Transparent means uh, see all the way through. So we're just going to move this bad boy over to 50%. Oh yeah. So. Essentially, if you already know the track you're looking at, you could even make it more transparent, and you won't even see the low response scores anymore, and then you can just see the map. So you can move, slide this uh, transparent uh, marker back and forth as you need. Thank you for the question. 
Thank you. Uh, so I know you showed us a little bit just a min minute ago, but can you show us again how to do a filter expression? Sure, sure. So the, the filter, this is probably the coolest part about Rome. Um, oh, it's all right. We're, we're looking at Clark. Let's do another Clark one. Let's have a little fun here. Okay. So you can essentially ask the Rome questions and it will uh, almost like a, like an inquiry. Like, let's say I wanted to know um, which low response scores in Clark County, Nevada, are the product um, um, have uh, less than 50% broadband connectivity. Um, this was an actual request I got uh, two weeks ago, and they asked me. I had a partner in North Las Vegas. Can you show us the tracks in North Las Vegas that um, the folks? Are, are not that well connected to broadband so that we can do extra work in those communities. And I built them an app similar to this. And I will show you how to do that right now. We pick this up like this. I only tell you that and that people do request this information in real life, I promise. Not just for fun. Um, we're going to build a filter expression. So we have two options to filter. Right? I'm going to add an expression set. Ooh. Okay. So again, remember, it's only showing us what's on the screen right now. I can't see this yet. So it's only going to show us this stuff right here because we're zoomed in. Stuff. So let's ask it a question. All of which are true. So I want to know where the low response score is at least. Uh, I don't know if the last time you took a logic class, but if you have it, it's time for a refresher, or this is difficult. Um, I want to know at least 30, right? All the tracks that are have an LS, LRS score above 30, okay? And, and I want to know the population, this is the HHD survey from the ACS um, that are connected to broadband is at most. 50. Okay, so I'm asking which tracks that I'm looking at in the map right now have an LRS score that's at least 30, that only half the households are connected to broadband. Okay? So you can see right now, 474 are tracks of future in the map. Let's see if we can hug you. No whammies. No whammies. No whammies. Come on. Thinking. Oh, ah, we're going to home. I can hear you. Okay, start descending. Now I've got a list of the 44 tracks in Clark that have 50% or less uh, connectivity to broadband with an LRS score over 30. And then I can do that same little game where I can click through and see those tracks with the highlights. Right, super fun. So to, to do that again, you just options, filter. Um, the simple one I showed you, um, I'm going to take this one off. I think it fills the expression. We want to, if you want to add in a county name, you just put that here, count name is, and then literally write the county with the correct spelling, Clark County, like that. Um, and if you have more questions about filters expression, the recorded webinar by Ms. McArdle, that's on the uh, census website. She uh, goes at this piece at length and is really, really great at this. So I would recommend if you have more questions about expression, um, to watch that webinar. So thank you for the question. Thanks, Brian. How would I get the highlighted tracks now? Awesome. So we're just looking at that. So let's say I want to know what these tracks are, right? I, I just did this super fun expression, uh, filter expression. Um, where are these tracks? So over here on the left, look like that. And then if I want to make show more than one, I use the shift key. Now I'm holding shift and I click. And that was, you can see it's all of the tracks that are in bold here. So I can see all the highlighted ones. So you could say I want to do the 10 most important. I'm interested in the 10 most, the 10 tracks with the highest LRS scores, 50% less or less broadband connectivity. I could produce that map just like that. Thank you for the question. Well, that's pretty nifty. 
Very cool. So what do we do when we have multiple jurisdictions? For example, um, counties like uh, Portland Metro. Uh, we, we, you know, we're talking about uh, two states, seven counties. What do we do when, it, when we approach something like that? I had to bring up Portland, didn't you? And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the local government that is Portland. Well, let's take a quick look at Portland uh, before we move on and look at the map. It's, it's, it's difficult, um, right? Because Portland's across, I think there's five just in Oregon, right? And then and then there's uh, Vancouver, Washington as well. So we, we did this before, right? We did Portland. Of course, Portland doesn't populate, which I think someone should write a letter. That's rude. I'll just give this a second. We don't want a Nevada data table about Portland. Okay, so if let's say I wanted to do a similar search like that, like we've been doing with Clark, and that your, your jurisdiction's not nested in, um, you have to essentially get the whole city onto the screen as best you can using the Zoom functions. So what I what I would do. Let's probably put it right here. I'm going to show you a trick I would do. Essentially, and then um, because I've got Washington and I've got Washington up here and Portland down here on the screen, um, I would run a filter expression on state name. And that would pull out the that would pull out the Washington counties. Okay, see how the Washington counties are gone now? And then you could use Zoom to try to get this as close as you could to show um, um, all of the tracks just for Portland. But um, we'll show a little, we'll, 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 if we have time, we'll look at Portland on the uh, rapid response map too. There's a, there's a fun way on there to look at cities as well. But I, I, I certainly appreciate the concern. It's a little difficult when they cross uh, counties like that. Thank you for the question. We have a few more uh, questions coming in, Brian. For example, as a CRR, the only technology I'll have access to is an iPad. May I access the Roam from an iPad? Absolutely. You sure can. Uh, if you want to do that as a CRR, let's try it. You would just, I would recommend typing census, space, Roam, like this, and then it will be that. Because it's a, it runs over a uh, web browser, it'll be right there, fun. And then you too can have all the fun. As a CRR, what part of Rome will I use the most and why? You're going to use, I think, the address. I'm going to refresh this page. So essentially, um, Rome is very useful to a CR to learn that demographic information about where you're going, especially if you haven't been there before, right? You don't want to make assumptions. You can learn because, I mean, this is survey data that they spent a lot of uh, time and effort with. Right? So let's say um, we were going to do, we're talking some Portland, let's, let's talk about, uh, we're doing a bit of uh, Powell's books, right? Uh, I could go down to here, check my address, 1005 West Burnside. Okay, so I've got the address here. I would zoom out. I'm going to put, remember how to get that, that uh, street map back on, base map, street. Okay, see what I am again. Okay. And I click on the track like that, and I'm going to learn. What can I learn about folks who live in this track, right? Median age is higher than some of the other ones. Now you can learn demographics over here. And so on. So I think in answering and trying to answer your question directly, it's going to be once you have an address about where you'll be doing an event, you can search it up here, and then it'll give you a dot, and you'll click on the census track and learn all the information you and you'll be a lot better prepared for an event in that track than you would be otherwise. Brian, when you are zooming in, does the number of features of the data table decrease to really pinpoint an area? Absolutely. It's extremely sensitive. So 
That's why it's, 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 why it's a little tough. That's why I encourage people to use uh, filters. Um, whatever's on the screen right now, it will show you that many tracks. So, for example, this is the national map. See how many tracks we have. Probably shouldn't have done that, but why not? Right? 64,000, right? So if I shift in, in Nevada for some reason. So watch how this, watch where this changes. See how it went down to uh, 3184? That's only the tracks on the screen right now. So if you have a territory that's across different counties, um, the best course, as I showed you with Portland, is to try to get it centered on the screen and then use a filter to take out the information you don't want. Thank you for the question. That will come in handy for sure. There's so many words and uh, different words that we don't recognize in terms of abbreviations. Is there a glossary somewhere on the site we can do for quick reference? Oh, that is such a good question. Thank you for asking. Let's take a look at all the fun things that are on the front page of the Rome website. Okay. We have what you're asking about is a data dictionary. Let's see what this is. So you might be wondering, like, how did I know that that broadband uh, stat was what it was? I, yeah, I looked it up on this. <laughs> so you can see the search we've been using. County name right here, 27 count, two, 2017 county name. All right, so the definition of what all these things are, what all of these variables are across the bottom, they will tell you right here. So like you can see the definitions at the bottom. I won't go through them. You can see. You, you, you can read them all. But yes, there's a data dictionary there. Um, FAQ, quick tips, these are great. And of course, the recorded webinar. So can the public see Rome, or is it just us census employees? Oh, well, sure. It's a, a public website. That's what I love working here. All of the, our best information is available to the public. Wait till you see in part two the rapid response data that's available to the public. It's so exciting. Everything I'm showing you is available for any, any member of the public to access. That's all the questions we have so far, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. I appreciate it. Uh, we are now going to open up part two. I know you're having fun. Can, can, can it get any more fun? The answer is obviously yes, because you haven't seen the rapid response map, right? Those Rome, that, that was the predicted response rate that we were relying on until the census started. But now it's, it's live, right? We've all responded. We're having, it's been live for a month. We're having way too much fun. Um, what are some of the tools that we have available to the public to uh, show folks our progress and that we can keep track of our own progress and to keep us uh, motivated and excited. Two exciting ones. Oops. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to open it. So let me show you how to find it. Oops. 2020census.gov. Rapid response. I just type in 2020census response rate in the Google. It just comes up. Okay. Take a look. This is fun. Ooh, it's a color-coded map of how folks are responding to the census. Um, and it, what you can do is I can take my mouse and put it over the state, and it shows you how awesome the Northwest is doing, stuff like this. How fun is that? Okay. So let me show, I'm going to show you um, a little bit on just this page, and then I'm going to show you, we have full tables of this data that you can use and manipulate as well. All right, so let's take a look at the 2020 Census Self-Response uh, Act or Rapid Response Map. This is so cool. Okay, so we're going to take a look at Idaho as an example. So we already saw we can scroll over the states themselves and learn their total self-response rate. It shows the total and the Internet. And let's say I want to learn a little bit more about Idaho. I go over here. I know. And then I want to look at it from county. I recommend using county. This is the easiest one. I'm going to show you city in a moment, but it's not nearly as much fun, right? Like, how fun is that? Right? Cool, cool, cool. So you can see 
Idaho self response rate, and then it's also color coded. Oh, I'm trying to get this right. All right, so Idaho's 51, which is terrific, and then Ada, 63, leading the state in the biggest county. How awesome is that? All right, so you can scroll over the counties and see the clusters. Right, here's Ada over here. Awesome. And you can tell that was Ada because it's color coded. <laughs> and you can go through and see each county in Idaho. How fun is that? I can also see it by congressional district. Take a look. Ah. And you can see the, of course, as they, as they know themselves, the fighting first over here. Looking good. All right, in a second. And, uh, you know, you can see divided by that. Let's take a look at city. Um, this is less fun. I'm going to show you how to look at the cities here in a second. Exactly, right? So you got a little dots here. If you put your mouse over it, you can find the response rates of the cities. But it's very small. You can use this here. I'm going to show you this in a second. How to zoom on this map. Oh, boy. I can get a little bit closer. And you can scroll and you can see by city. Okay, let's try go back to county so that I can show you how to search by census tract. Okay. All right, so when I clicked on census tract, it automatically just populated me to county, the first one. Right? So I can pick which county I want. They can look here. Hey, that's fine. That's a very nice county. We can look at that. Okay. So now I want to show you how. What's, what's over here? So this is the Zoom. I've gotten very good at Zoom, especially from our time on Rome, right? We can zoom in. We can put our mouse over here. We can see which tracks. Not Ada County isn't perfect, although it's, it's, it's almost perfect. Right? There's just a couple that need a, a, little, a little love, love and attention. Um, if I click on this house. I'll take you back to where I was, right? And then I want to show you this quickly before I show you the table. There's all these different types of, uh, of zooms you can do. This is super fun. Okay, so this one is where you want to keep it. This is the pan. This is how you move the map around in an easy way. If you do not have pan on, things can get confusing fast. Okay, a different type of, so I can do zoom like this. All right, this. All right, make it similar to what we did in Rome with the shift clicks. And it will seem like that. Fun. What other zooms can we do? Mm -hmm. What about square? Square is pretty fun. Let's do that one more time. One more time. Second. Okay. And I can do square, like that. And so essentially with, with the square, the circle, and the, uh, the lasso, it will just pick up the tracks that I cover. So I go back again. Let's click off of this. So let's say I do, I can, essentially it'll do everything within this radius. So if I start like right here, right? Oh, look at that, see? That can show, let's say, let's say 3.5 mile radius from right here. So uh, yeah, it's a radius, yep. And you let go, and then it'll show you all, I'm putting this up in there again, it's showing you all the tracks that come up within a 3.5 radius from where you started clicking, right? So how fun is that? So you can do that. So all of that is over here. You need to put it back to the pan, or things are going to get confusing fast. Okay? So that's how you use the map. That is a basic, um, understand, yeah, basically how it works. Um, I, maybe we'll show you, I think it's time to take a look at the, Table, the tableau table. This is really, really awesome. If you thought Rome was great, you go, I, Brian, I can't take anymore. Rome was amazing. This map is also super amazing, and especially because it shows us on the, uh, and it shows us by a track level. It shows us the states relative to one another. Remember that from the first page. We have five. Right, so we, so we saw this. I, I can see all the states relative to one another. How, how cool is that? Watch what happens when I. Like this link here. 
my new favorite sentence tool. The tableau of glory. Look at this. Look at all this information publicly available. Like we talked about earlier, um, this map, Rome, the tableau, all available to the public, to the taxpayer, to everyone. Oh, and it's amazing. I love this. Okay, what's on this page? Answer everything and more, and links to even more fun. So we'll go through it slowly, and then we'll, have a, and we'll do a fun experiment. Um, we have total responses, total response rate, right? And then we have our rankings by state, right, which is what I'm, of, I'm of course, is very interested. We see our friends from Idaho right there. We're going to push themselves in the top 10 by the end of next week. Yeah, there's Washington. Woo, look at Washington. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, we have total responses by state. Right? I, I'm excited to report. Let's see how many Nevada has. Oh, 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 oh. Awesome. Right, 630,000. Terrific. And then you can see the total. This is all the cities in the country. These are all the counties in the country. They're, they're Minnesota and Wisconsin are, I don't know what they're doing. They're doing very well. They're doing very, very well. Okay. So on a national level, this information is interesting based on the state ranking, I think. You can see it's the best way to track your relative progress, right? Because if somebody says to you, 48% of the households have responded in the state so far, and yeah, so far in the country, I think that's good. It, and without like a, a relative measure, without a time measure, it's hard for that number to really hit home and to mean something for you. So I think one of the best, it's the numbers relative to one another, right? So we can see our growth relative to the other states. And then you can also see, let's go back over here for a second, notice that if I put, oh, there's one more state, um, that they put the, uh, both the current self, I'm pointing with my finger again, um, the current self-response rate, the total, that's at 51.6 for Idaho, that's right now, and it also gives you the 2010 numbers. So you can use the relative rankings um, here, to evaluate them against to 2010. So how fun is that? So we, we'd like to talk about in Nevada how we were 40th in the country in 2010, and currently we are 27, just past Alabama, roll tight. <laughs> All right. So let's learn how to – let's see this awesome information that's in this thing. All right. Let's pick a state. Let's go with everyone's new favorite state, Idaho. Let's do it here. Ah, look at that. And now it's ranking the self-response rate. And it's so awesome that Ada is leading the state, by the way. Congratulations, everybody. Um, all of your counties, right? My self-response rate. It's got all of your cities over here. Um, I would recommend using this population range, right, because you no, know, like essentially the big cities and the small towns are different, right? It's hard to evaluate them against each other. So you could essentially pick an arbitrary metric to like between small town and big. You can use like let's say I don't know, twenty-seven thousand. That's a good one, right? Now you see that we're down to thirteen counties, right? So you can almost compare the bigger counties of your state against the smaller counties, and you can manipulate the uh, the data that way. Right? That's fun. So let's say I want to learn even more, even more, right? Oh, so we were talking about cities, right? We were saying hard different because uh, city isn't a, uh, a parameter that's used by the census bureau. We use tracts, we use counties, we don't use cities. But I want to evaluate on cities. I want to learn more about Boise City, Idaho. How can I do that? Let's click on this. Ooh, okay, so all I did, I clicked once on Boise City, and then I going to take the invitation to accept it, to click to learn more about Boise City, Idaho. Let's see what happens. Yeah, no whammies. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Stop. All oh, right. Okay. How cool is that? So now it's showing you all the tracks in Boise City, Idaho. And if you put your mouse over the track, it will tell you the, self -res the response rate in that track right now. How cool is that? Right, we're having so much fun, and you could use in that same um, that the uh, the lasso tool. You could use that. So let's say you wanted to just get all the non-blue ones, right? You could just kind of go, I want these, 
Yeah, it'll highlight it for you. You can do it just like that. How fun is that? Super, super fun. Hey, I want to show you something else. This is a great tool for partners, for organizations, for all sorts of things. Um, I sent a few of these out last week to the state's complete count committee in Nevada. They were having so much fun. Okay, how can I take this picture and sing it out? Very easy. Down at the bottom of the screen here, share. Ah, okay. You know, use your current view. Now, this is my secret. See this email with the link? Click there. It'll reload, okay? You want this link right here. This is the easiest way to share it, okay? I just controlled C that. Go to new tab. I just made that link. I'm going to copy and paste and prove to you. It'll work. That's the very map I just made. So you can easily play with this, um, cut out Boise City, um, and then make a linkable, uh, make, make a link that you could send out to a partner or anybody else who's interested, or across the team also. Okay. Super fun. Super, super fun. Okay. Who wants to do one more example, and then we'll do some questions? Let's try to stay. Go back to Oregon. Still neglected. Okay. So to take off this population range, you just click this right here. So I'll give you all of them again. Just like that. And then you can see um, all, all the different cities by ranking. See if I can find Portland. Portland's here. That made it easier. <laughs> Same thing. Click on Portland. Open this up like this. And we'll go down. And you can now see, as you know, right now you can see all the Portland tracks across the uh, five different counties of Oregon. Right? Super cool. So uh, that that is your and then you'll be able to emphasize so you can say to your partners, hey, look, we've got some work to do over here. Right? A little work to do in North Portland. I love North Portland. Perfect. Come on. And so on. But it's, it's super easy um, to uh, pull up a map like this. And then, again, to, if you want to share the fun Portland map with a partner, you click on share. Click on email with the link. Loads. And then you just copy this, and away you go. And there are, you could get lost. I'm sorry, what? you could get lost on this website on the Tableau for hours and hours and hours of time. It is fascinating, absolutely fascinating. But I will pause now and uh, take questions you might have about the map or about the Tableau. Well, Brian, these are some pretty cool, impressive, useful tools for, for our job. That's awesome. We do have some questions that have come in. Um, the first question is, how do I find the site for the map and the charts? Okay. Excellent question. Okay. So, oh, let me go back. Oh, we lost it. 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 So to get to the, this is 2020census.gov slash en slash response hyphen rate dot html. If you type 2020 census response rates into Google, it'll also come up there. Okay, yes, that's where this is here, this map. And then to get to the Tableau page, it's this link right here. Which will take you to here. I see. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, another question we received is, what's the easiest way to see track level response rates? So that's a great question. Um, my advice would be to go through and do a county search. I would do them from the Tableau and not from – well, I mean, there's two ways. I could show you both ways. Why not? 
Why not? Okay, so let's say I wanted to get the response rates out of Whatcom, Washington. Got to keep an eye on Bellingham, you know. They, uh, you know, never know what they're up to. Nice people, really nice people, actually. Whatcom. Okay, okay. Okay, I got a census tract. Do so you see how I went to the county? And then I click on census tract. Up, 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 up. Okay, so one way I can find out is I pick the state, I pick the county, I click on census tract, and now I can go over the tract and get these specific responses by tract. I also could come into here. This is the tableau again. I can search by state, Washington, 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 and I can click on Whatcom County, click to learn more about Whatcom County. So give this a second to learn. And you'll see that I can do the exact same thing here as well. And the advantage of going through the Tableau is that it's easy to um, email the link to someone from here. Thank you for the question. So how would, how would I then email that to a partner? Uh, or could I make it into a PDF and email it to them as an attachment? What would be the best way to do that? I would recommend emailing a link. So you click right here. You can download it here and create a PDF. That's the option. I recommend clicking share, clicking the email link button here. And then this link right here, going to control C. And I'll show you that's exactly what I just made. I prefer to uh, create the link from the public tableau and send it. That way I don't have to download more files on my computer. But you say, as you can see, then then this is just a live website that they can all go to as well. And you can see they can also play the fun drag your mouse across the track game. Right, that's true. If you send a link, they can also go to explore a little bit more and see other areas as well. That's, that, they can have some fun too. Um, so how would I find the specific maps from the tables back uh, in the Tableau? Well, how do I, no, let me show you that one more time. Okay. We were here. Yeah, so back in Tableau, and I wanted to get to the maps, right? How do I do that? So we have Oregon pulled up. Let's say I wanted to learn about um, like Portland again, or Beaverton. Right, all you have to do to get the map open is you click on the city like this, and then you just click to see more in Beaverton, Oregon. And the, uh, all the fun is unlocked. And away you go. Uh -huh. Very cool. So we have a few more uh, questions trickling in, Brian. Uh, does the percentage rate for the internet refer to the percentage of respondents who use internet self-response? So they show both um, the internet self-response rate and the uh, the total response rate. So you can see, for example, on the Tableau page, uh, e 48% nationally total, 42%, point 42.5% were done. That's the math. Oh boy. Oh boy. Thank you. I'm oh, sorry, Veronica, one more time, please. Can you tell me if, like, Rome, can the public also access the self-response results as well while you're maneuvering the site here? Can you uh, let me know if this is also public? Yes. This is uh, um, this map, the Tableau, and the Rome application are all public. That's why we can 
presumably email all the links to our partners if they wanted to see it. So when you search for a specific track number as opposed to just hovering over with the mouse over the map, is that, what's the best option for doing that? Um, for searching for a specific track, uh, my advice would be to uh, probably use Rome. would be the way to do it. Uh, I would use Rome because you can use these two applications in, uh, in combination, in concert as well. Um, you could use Rome to find the track, like where it is generally in the city, and then you could use um, this self-response map to show you what that, so then once you know where the track is, like if you only had a track number, you could use Rome to find out where it is and then use the self-response map to show you what the current self-response rate is for that track. Oh, I see. So we can use a different tool. Okay, that's that's perfect. Thank you. So we have one more question, actually kind of a two-question, uh, two-parter. How can I use the response map to check on the progress of a harder-to-count track? Can you show us how that's to use Rome and the response map together? Uh, like, for example, going back to the Portland um, example you showed us earlier, can you show us how to check that part of the information? Sure, that's a, that's a great question. It would be a great way, and uh, I think it would be a great question to close on. Um, before that, I just want to thank all the viewers for sitting through the, the very long and arduous discussion about Rome and Dad, I appreciate your attention so much. We appreciate all your hard work out there. I hope this was beneficial to you. Again, if you need help with these materials, um, the Suzanne McArdle webinar on the Rome website is definitely the place to start. But I, I'd like to show you, I guess as we wrap up, um, how we might use these products in combination. So I'm having a hard time with my WebEx here. It's okay. Pull this back up. So let's do one more example in everyone's new favorite city, Portland, Oregon. We'll pull this up here. Okay. So I can use the Tableau pull up the map, okay? So this, these are all the tracks in Portland, Oregon, right? So I'm looking at this map and jumping off the page, and I'm not criticizing anyone, I don't know anything about this track, I say I want to know more about track 73, okay? If we're going to do an event in track 73, what, how can I learn more about it? That's where I could take it back into Rome, okay? So if I say, Back over here. Oh. Now we're going to go back into census. Oh. We'll open up the Rome application. And we'll do a search. And we can do a search by census track. That was 70, I got 73 of it. Census track 73, comma, what? Track 73, comma, sometimes you just have to get lucky. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what I brought. Right, right, it's not city. See, I knew that. So you have to also know, thank you for this example, Veronica. Um, I can't search by city. You're trying to stump me. All right, guys, stump, right? It's not in Multnomah County. How do they say it, right? So. Census Tract 73, Multnomah County, mumble through that, okay, now I know where it is, okay, we already knew where it was before, now I can click on this, click off, okay. click back on it, and I can learn the demographic information about why that census, right, because what was it, it was, it's uh, only 14.9%, what can, perhaps there's more information I could learn about this tract to help me explain both why I have a uh, response score that's that low right now, 
And though you can see it's already, the LSR, the LRS score was already uh, over 25. But what do I need to know about this track that maybe um, that can help me do events and that can empower me to do, um, I guess, that better engagement overall in the community to help raise that response rate? So the um, Rome has all that uh, fantastic ACS data that will help you do events and help you organize based upon the current self-response rate that you can learn using the public tableau. That's my short answer. All right, well, I think that's it for me. Uh, my little dog's saying we're going to time to wrap up. Um, I just, again, just want to thank everyone for doing this. Um, Veronica, thank you so much um, for facilitating the discussion. You were terrific. And then thank you for those folks joining us on the chat. Um, I hope this was instructive, and uh, have a great day. Thank you for viewing today's training. The session will now end.